How's it going guys, Ultra Sive here, and in today's video we are going to be looking at how to get better FPS in Fortnite, so let's get into it. First, we're going to go into the Epic Games Launcher, and this is the first tip. Click on the setting uh, gear right here and verify the, your game, or you can uninstall it and reinstall it. Just verifying is a little bit simple, simpler of a step, and it'll make sure all your game files are there and make sure they're not corrupt or anything like that. The next step is to update your graphics drivers, which is either AMD or NVIDIA if you have one of those cards. I have an NVIDIA card. Uh, if you have it on AMD, it's basically the same thing, except you're going to have to use the AMD software. You can probably look it up very easily and find out how to do it. But first, you're going to need to go to GeForce Experience. I have uh, something on my desktop to go for it. Otherwise, you can just search it in your Windows search, even though Windows search is garbage. But yeah, just open your GeForce Experience, and you should be able to update your drivers. Once you're in your uh, NVIDIA GeForce Experience panel, you're going to need to go up to the top left here, click on Drivers, and check for updates. After you check for updates, you can download your newest driver. I'm not going to do it right now because I'm making a video, but yeah, that's essentially what you need to do. The next step would be to defragment your hard drive, which is to list everything in your hard drive in correct order without end spaces in between or parts or bits being separated which all you need to do is type in defrag in your Windows search. It'll come up defrag and optimize drives. Once you're at this panel, you're gonna click on your drive that you wanna do, click analyze and then optimize. Uh, I have it on my hard drive, so I just click analyze. And once it finishes analyzing, then I would click on optimize. But since I run these occasionally often, I'm not gonna do it right now. But yeah, if you haven't done it for a long time, you should do it. Like it says last run here, and it's within a month, so I'm pretty good. The next step would be to make sure that you don't have a ton of other applications running on your computer using up resources like your CPU and RAM. In that case, we can go and open the Task Manager by right-clicking your taskbar and going to Task Manager, uh, in which you can see that in my uh, case, I have OBS, which I'm using to record this, is using up a lot of RAM as well as my browser. So you might wanna close your browser and OBS in my case, and it'll lower down your CPU and your RAM resources. And this should allow you to play Fortnite uh, a few more FPS if this is in like your bottleneck. The next step is to add some launch options to your game. This is basically, if you've ever done it for Steam, it's almost the same for Fortnite. So you go to the gear panel, then settings, and then you expand the Fortnite section, click on allow command or additional command line arguments and paste what I have in the description. For the last one that I have, preferred processor, this is how many logical processors are on your processor, which we can go to performance and in task manager, we can go to the performance bar and then under logical processors, we can see that I have eight because I have a four core eight thread processor and then right on the last box where it says eight right here, you're gonna put how many you have, four, 12, eight, something along those lines, maybe even two if you're playing on a lower end device. This next step is quite complicated, but it is trying out a stretch resolution. In the left hand of your keyboard, you should see a Windows key button with the Windows logo and press uh, that key plus R at the same time. Try, uh, click on percent app data percent and it should take you to the app data folder go back to app data we then are going to go to local then we're going to go to fortnite game saved config windows client and then we're going to come to a file right here make sure you go to properties and make sure read only is off then we are going to open it and we're going to scroll down until you find resolution size X and late, last user confirmed resolution size X. And we're gonna change these to a different resolution. Uh, you can use 1440 by 1080. If you're on a 1080 resolution, you can use 1600 by 1080, or you can try a different resolution, like uh, around like 768p. If that's yours, you can probably look up a ton of them online. I may put some in the description below. Remind me in the comments if I didn't. But yeah, after you did this step, go to File, Save. Then you escape out of this. And we're not finished with this step quite yet. We're going to right-click and go to NVIDIA Control Panel. 
After NVIDIA control panel is open, go to adjust desktop size and proportion since we're doing a resolution that is not standard or for our display. Go to full screen and perform scaling on your GPU since you're going to be using your GPU. This is going to be slightly different with AMD, but essentially it's the same thing because you'll have your control panel down here. And you can probably look it up easier with a guide on the internet if you do not know how to do it or don't have the knowledge to. And then after we're done here, we're going to click apply. And then we will be, we should be done. You're going to then click yes and you've already changed your scaling. So yes, this should be how this, uh, this is the finally finished setting up a stretch resolution, which allows for less pixels and you should be getting bigger people. So it'll be easier to shoot people and you'll have bigger pixels. If you don't like it, you can just try a lower resolution on whatever scale you're using right now, like 21 by nine or 16 by nine, whatever you're using right now. I actually prefer 16 by nine resolution because I do YouTube, but you can try out a stretch res. I know a lot of pro players prefer them and you get FPS gains. Plus you can see higher vertically. And uh, yeah, a lot of people play a lot better with the stretch res. Personally, I just suck at the game no matter what I do. So you know what? I, I, I'm just gonna play with the regular 16 by nine. It kind of looks pretty to be honest. The next step we perform is actually in the game. So we're gonna go up to the menu and then go to the gear settings icon and then we can turn down our resolution, but this should be the same as your display. And then the 3D resolution, which is what the game uses. Uh, if you're not getting a good 60 FPS, you can turn it down to about 80, 60, 50, and about as lowest as I would go is about 480p, which is 44.5%. Uh, after that, I, I can't actually see much on the screen anymore. And so I just leave that there. Turn your view distance near, shadows off, anti-aliasing off, textures low, effects low, and post-processing low. And if you V-Sync on, make sure to turn it off. V-Sync is a big hit to frame rate. Uh, if you want to see what FPS you're getting, just turn on show FPS. And I don't know uh, why someone would play with motion blur. It's just, it just gets harder to see things. So I typically have it turned off. After you're done with all your settings, click apply and then go back and you can join into an actual game. And if you're still not getting your 60 FPS, we need to find your bottleneck, which we can do that by going to task manager. So while you're playing, you can alt tab and go back into your task manager. I don't have mine up currently, but if you press your windows key, go to task manager. So now that our task manager is open, we need to find our bottleneck. My GPU and CPU are about evenly matched, so that is probably not going to be my bottleneck. But if your CPU shows that it has been used 100% while you're in-game, that may be your bottleneck. If your GPU shows that it's being used 100% while you're in-game, that may be your bottleneck. If your RAM frequency is low or your RAM is being completely used, like your full 8 or 16 gigs, if it's maxed 100% being used, that may be a bottleneck and your hard drive. If your hard drive is uh, at like 100% active time while you're playing, you may need to upgrade to an SSD. So make sure your hardware, uh, as if it's not all your PC parts in general, make sure it's pretty cheap just to upgrade one at a time as long as it's uh, on like the same platform. GPUs are pretty expensive though, but you don't need too much to run Fortnite. 1050 Ti, 950. That those are absolutely perfect for Fortnite. Fortnite doesn't require uh, too much hardware, but it is pretty CPU intensive. Uh, I would recommend something like a uh, Core i5-7400 to run Fortnite on, or like a Ryzen 5 2600X. Those are some pretty good CPUs if you're looking into getting a new CPU for running Fortnite. Well, I really hope you guys did enjoy this video. I hope you did get to your 60 FPS goal. 60 FPS is in the PC Master Race, what we consider playable. 30 FPS is absolutely fine if that's all you can get on your system. But mostly for this video, my goal was to get everybody to 60 FPS. So hopefully, well, with the tips in this video, you did get to 60 FPS. Pasadios, my dudes.